Okay, want to play a game? Yeah. Welcome, guys, to RLCS week number one predictions. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat, and let's get this started. So, I somewhat promised player rankings, but I kind of ran out of time. I apologize. We won't have player rankings for this season. We'll do it next season. Me and Shogun will pick that back up. Hopefully, Shogun does his own anyway, because that would be fun to, to listen to. But I ran out of time. I had to do a lot this week, so I couldn't really get it done. So, no player rankings, but we will be predicting every single game of the RLCS season every single week, as well as Giblet making predictions, which is going to be a lot of fun, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. So, let's get this started. We're going to do the matches in hype order, and I'll explain my order of hypeness, I guess you would say, uh, just so we can uh, go through this in kind of a fun way. So, we'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. First off, number five, matchups in hype order. So, this is from worst to best match that I want to see personally for each region on the week. I'd say I put all 10 together. Europe would probably be in the lead a lot because I feel like Europe games a lot more exciting right now until we see how this North American landscape kind of plays out. So first match, G2 versus Allegiance. If G2 was playing probably anyone else, including FlyQuest, literally anyone else, I would have their match being pretty hype just because we don't know what G2 is going to look like. They have literally not beaten an RLCS caliber team since the regional championships. That includes the world championship. That includes Gnarly. That includes all of the Psionic sponsored online tournaments throughout this past offseason, the past like two months or so. So G2 is in like a free fall right now. So like I think it would be kind of fun to see how they match up against literally anyone else but Allegiance. But Allegiance, personally, I think is the weakest team in North America, and for that reason, I have G2 winning this game. I think it'll be relatively easy for G2, but <clears throat> who knows? Maybe Allegiance can show up. I just haven't seen anything from Allegiance either. Like, I feel like they're a team that they definitely earn their spot here, but they're going to struggle. They're definitely a team that is a team that can compete in that middle ground, but I feel like when they get up to the RLCS level, it's going to be tough for them going throughout these matchups so that's who i have i have g2 now let's check on what G what giblet has and uh he's got a lot to say next up allegiance versus g2 <coughs> all right right who's gonna win allegiance or g2 g2 which one are you switching it Which one's going to win? You, you picked up both. You pointed at both. You picked up both. Is it that tough? I know G2's had a bad off season, but which one? Who's going to win? This one? Okay. G2. G2's going to win. Yay. Yay. All right. All right. Giblet. He also agrees with me with G2 of that pick. Also, we will have Twitter polls. It'll be in the description below, or you can just follow my Twitter. I'll be posting them probably before this video is even out, but they'll go through until the games are about to start, and that's where the polls will end. So we will be competing myself versus Giblet versus you guys on Twitter, who is going to have the best season overall throughout all the weeks of league play. So that's what I have here. We both have G2, me and Giblet both have G2. Next match, we have FlyQuest versus Allegiance. I put this one at number four. Like, it's an interesting matchup because it's both teams that got promoted. It's the first time, I believe, in history where both teams get promoted from the rival series. And, like, obviously, we've only done it for two years. But there's been four opportunities. It's only happened once. And FlyQuest and Allegiance, it should be a fun matchup. I think FlyQuest, to start the season off right, have to get this win. But at the same time, so does Allegiance as well. Like, they're going to open up the day. Uh, for the RLCS, which is pretty cool to see the two new teams in there. I think Allegiance, they have a shot here for sure. When they played in the Rival Series, it was 3-2. But again, like I've seen FlyQuest, they've been a lot more experience, going to Gnarly and doing all that. And Allegiance, just, I, I, like, I'm not sure what to see, uh, what I'll see from Allegiance. So I got FlyQuest here, and I, like, I'll go 3-1. Like I think it's the first game jitters. Could actually be pretty nerve-wracking for both teams. Like, if someone could get out to an early lead, like games one and two, 
That's a big, big start, and that might really help them propel them through this series. So if Allegiance can quiet those nerves, which they probably can. They've been here before. They've been in the RLCS. They might have a chance against FlyQuest, but I think FlyQuest will take this. Probably three games to one. Now, let's go over to Giblet, see what he's got to say. First matchup of RLCS. Season 6, we got FQ, FlyQuest versus Allegiance. Yes. Which one? Who's who's going to win? Who's yes. going to win? Which one? Okay. Who's going to win? They both can't win. Who's going to win? Which one? Who's going to win? FlyQuest is going to win. FlyQuest is going to win? Yeah, FlyQuest. Yay. Yay. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're back. Giblet also with the FlyQuest pick. Again, Twitter polls will be in the description below. Also, just follow my Twitter and you'll see them pop up. But moving on to the next matchup. FlyQuest versus Energy. So this one I find a little interesting because I feel like FlyQuest this season is kind of like the lightweight boxer uh, going into like a heavyweight fight, but has like a really, really good right hook that can take anyone out at any time. And I think FlyQuest is one of those teams that they're not expected to win these games, but they're going to win one of them. They're going to win one of them this season at least. Who knows where that'll happen? I don't think it'll happen here because Energy is just calm cool collected they've been here before they've had that amazing world championship run amazing gnarly run their only downside has been like losing cloud nine lately i don't see them losing this matchup but FlyQuest, there's something about them that gives them a shot against literally anyone in this uh north america region so i'm gonna go energy we'll go three one as well and uh yeah we'll see what giblet has to say about this game last matchup FlyQuest versus NRG. Yes. Who's going to win? Oh. Who's going to win? Oh. Which one? FlyQuest? Okay. FlyQuest is going to win. Yay. Yay. All right. Good job. Good job. All right. Gibble going with FlyQuest. I think he really likes the color yellow, so that might help him. I'm not really sure. But FlyQuest, moving on. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Got a bit uh, like kind of a bad cough. Hopefully it clears up by the weekend. But there we go. The first time me and Giblet are have different opinions. We'll see who wins out on that one. Next match. C9 and Rogue. Now I had a hard time like figuring out what was the second best match. I kind of knew what the first one was, but I feel like FlyQuest Energy has that potential. So does C9 and Rogue, where like we just want to see what Rogue has. Because no one's really seen what Rogue can do yet. And they should lose to C9. C9 looks like the best team in North America right now. And so they should lose to them. But if Rogue takes one game, two games, and keeps it close, it's a really good sign for Rogue. And it'll be a really good indicator of where they are in the season. Uh, but I think C9 will take this. And I just honestly, I just want to see Rogue play. I, I haven't seen them. And that would be really nice to actually see this full roster. It's going to be really interesting throughout the season. Seeing... If Matt ever gets a shot at coming in like as a starting role, and that is if Rogue is having a hard time. Who knows? Matt told me he's working his butt off, trying to get ready just in case he is needed because he really wants to play. So, Matt's hungry. We'll see if the rest of Rogue is. They say they're hungry, but I need to see it on the field. Uh, so, I got C9. Let's go over to Giblet. See what he's got. Next matchup yeah. is... Okay. Next up is Cloud9 versus Rogue. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Which one? Okay. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah Cloud9's going to win. All right, Cloud9's going to win. Yay. Yay. Okay. So Giblet agrees with me. Another C9 pick there. Giblet's picks are looking pretty good. Probably because he agrees with me, so I think they look good, obviously. But he's got C9 as well. Going into the final matchup, we got Ghost Gaming versus EG. GG versus EG. This is going to be one of those games that could determine potentially a world championship spot. Probably not because the 3 through 6 will probably battle again. But this is one of those games where we're going to start seeing who's the third or fourth best, like, depending on G2 later on in the season. But... Everyone expects C9 and Energy to be up top. We honestly don't know where everyone else is going to land. G2's been struggling. A Ghost picks up Memory for Matt. And EG picks up Chicago. Probably the best free agent pickup, I would say, 
in the past offseason. So EG on paper should be better. But they've had pretty poor results so far. And we literally have not seen Ghost play in anything with this roster of Memory, Lethemir, and Zane Jack. We saw him at the Universal Open, but that's 2v2. No one cares about 2v2 in terms of RLCS, in terms of 3v3. I kind of said that the wrong way. Like People care about 2v2, but not when it comes down to RLCS. I don't really care how any of that happened. But Evil Geniuses, I think we'll take it because they have Chicago. They should take it. I think it's up to Corrupted G and Classics to make sure they step up. I feel like Corrupted G... Ha, like hasn't been looking as good as I thought he might look when they uh, picked up Chrome Like after he carried this team for a little while. He seems to be Maybe plateauing. I'm not really sure. Uh, we'll see like he's my man to watch corrupted G see how he's playing But I got EG just cuz Chicago is a great talent memory's good, too, but Chicago is Godly I would say so I'm gonna go EG here And I keep doing that. I keep trying to hit shift, but I have it on caps lock anyway Let's go over to Giblet. Let's see what he's got to say. So next up after that is, I believe it's EG. NGG, Ghost Gaming. Okay. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? Evil Geniuses or Ghost? There you go. Go ahead, eat a cracker. Who's going to win? Which one? EG? EG's gonna win. Okay. Yay. Yay. Okay. Now All right. There you have it. Giblet. EG pick as well. We are four out of five of the same picks. One pick different. The FlyQuest energy. Maybe he just likes the little guys, you know? Maybe that's what he likes. Him and Prime Thunder are pretty close in age, so it makes sense. Cable it going with FlyQuest in both of their games. But that's it for North America. Make sure you vote in the Twitter polls below. But we're going to move on over to Europe and see how that goes. Now, Europe, tons of hype. Tons of hype. Every single matchup is tons of hype. Like, honestly, I would have probably the top three matchups here be the top three matchups of the weekend. Uh, maybe Ghost and EG can sneak in here somewhere, but probably not. Uh, so this is, like, these are the best matchups. Europe is just so competitive. North America might be as well, but we just haven't seen it yet. So let's go over these picks. So I picked uh, Mouse Sports versus Vitality as the least hype matchup. It's kind of weird because it's Scrub Killer's debut, and normally I'd be like, oh, it's Scrub Killer's debut. That's going to rank pretty high. But I think this match is more of a blowout than most of the others. And so that's why I think the Scrub Killer debut is kind of hampered by like, He's playing a team I think a lot of people didn't expect to actually make it into the RLCS. And, like, everyone expected Secret uh, to make it over them. So, the Vitality should win this. And that's why it's a little bit less hype of a debut for Scrub. But I'm still really excited to see Scrub. I rate Scrub extremely highly. Every time he tries to do something, he does it really well in Rocket League. So, <coughs> I'm going with Scrub. I'm going with Vitality. Let's see what Giblet has to say about Scrub Killer. All right, you ready? Vitality or Mouse Sports, Ryan? Who's going to win? <coughs> you put your Cheerios on Vitality and a Goldfish? There you have it, guys. Vitality with a Cheerio and a Goldfish on it. There you go. Boom. Well, Giblet throws down his food onto Vitality. There is no better recommendation than that. Giblet going with Vitality as well. And again, Twitter polls will be in the description below. Next up. I have Mouse Sports versus Fnatic. I think Fnatic is the better team, but this one's very spicy because Mummy Snow, he gets kicked from Mouse Sports after having the best season, at least in terms of stats, that this team had. And I honestly thought it was a bad move by Mouse Sports to do this. I thought if you wanted to bring in Tigre, you take out Skyline. Then that makes this team way more competitive, in my opinion. I feel like Tigre and Mummy are very similar. And they don't really get an upgrade from this. And they weren't expected to be here. So if you're not getting an upgrade, you're going to have a hard time. So I think you'll have a hard time versus Fnatic. Like, I think the upgrade to Mummy Snow for Fnatic is actually really good. And I think that'll pay off. Also, they just beat Dignitas lately. So Fnatic looking pretty good. I'm going Fnatic here. I hope this goes five. I hope this goes five just for the added spice. I hope Mummy gets the game winner or something like that. That'd be really cool. But I'm going Fnatic here. Let's go over to Giblet and see what he's got to say. Here you go, Ryan. Who's going to win? 
Mouse Sports or Fanatic? Which one? Yeah. Which one? Which one? Yeah. Can I have one? Ah. Mouse Sports with the win. Okay, Mouse Sports gets the win. All right, Giblet thinks the mummy kick was a good move. He thinks it was. So, Giblet going with Mouse Sports. Interesting pick. Next up, PSG versus Complexity. This game is where everything starts getting extremely competitive. PSG versus Complexity. It's going to be good. PSG just won the Coliseum last weekend. They pick up Fruity in a very late roster pickup. Like, extremely late. So, I thought it wouldn't be as good of a move because the better players, per se, or the ones that got picked up earlier are better players. Uh, so, I thought Fruity might not gel too well just yet because it was a late pickup. But, hey, they won the Coliseum. <clears throat> we'll see if that pays off. We'll see if they can keep that momentum going throughout. I'm a little worried about them. Like, I don't know how Fruity's going to do in RLCS matches every single week where he's got to compete and perform every single week. But I do think a new team atmosphere could really help Shawset and Farah. Shawset is a great player, and when he has time, he makes things happen. He's a very good team player, in my opinion. And Farah needs a team around him to set him up, and then he closes. And so I think that's a good move for PSG. Uh, but I just don't know about Fruity yet, and who knows if they'll gel so early on in the season. But I'm still going to go PSG here. Complexity has had bad result after bad result pretty much all offseason with Greasy so far. They really haven't done a lot, and maybe they're still trying to find it. I don't know. But just momentum-wise, I have Complexity losing this because they seem to have not found it yet. So I'm going to go PSG for this one. I think it'll be relatively close, but I'll go PSG. Let's go over to Giblet, see what he's got to say. All right. Next up, PSG and Complexity. This is a tough one, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, a tough one? Who's going to win? PSG or Complexity? Yeah. Which one? Yeah. That one? All right, PSG. Going to win. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. All right. Giblet also on the PSG train. It's probably because they're a blue logo. I feel like blue logos and yellow logos are really going to help out a lot here for Giblet. But next up, it's season one all over again. Like, this was before Giblet was even born. We had Weenum Girls versus Flipside just battling it out. Even before ROCS season one, it was a battle for first. Flipside dominated for so long. Then Weedum Girls came in and started dominating. And they were going back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, Flipside would win out at least early on. Uh, f through seasons one and two until later on when they drop the Weeding Girls name. Northern Gaming, you know, they go on to win, obviously, with Turbo's help in season three. But it's been back and forth between these teams. Now, it's Remco and Cooks here, the only two left on these squads, world championship players. And uh, flip side, man, last season was rough for them because they got hot in week number four. Then they had a bye in week number five. Then they lose also to the Sweden Girls squad, Team Envy, who now doesn't have Diva anymore, but now has Metzenaris. But they lose in the playoffs to make the World Championship. And then what do they do like two weeks later in the gnarly qualifiers? Beat Dick and Toss back-to-back -back games. Back-to-back -back series. So flip side, they were so hot right around this time except for one series, and that was against Team Envy. And who knows? Maybe flip side could have made waves at the World Championship. Now, obviously, Team Envy didn't really do that. They barely finished in seventh they almost finished in ninth they almost lost the oc number two seat which has never happened before so they definitely needed to make a move and i think metzenaris is a good move for them like i think greasy probably is it's probably slightly better than metzenaris but metzenaris is more defensive minded it's gonna allow remco to move up and help i ignite on the offensive side and metzenaris is a great defender we've seen it all the time with complexity so it's gonna be interesting i think they will do well but I have to go flip side here. It, uh, you know what? I picked Weedham Girls when they played flip side in the playoffs. No one else did. I'm going to do it again. This is so tough. This is so tough. But I'm going to go Weedham Girls. Like flip side also been struggling a lot in the past few weeks in the offseason. So I think they just haven't found their mojo again yet. Hopefully they don't find it too late once again in the season. But I'm going to go Weedham Girls. I think they'll win the rematch. 
I think they'll win the classic matchup, and Remco will come out on top. Weedham Girls gets the win here. Let's go over to Giblet. Let's see what he has to say. Ryan, who's going to win? Flip side or Weedham Girls? Ryan, here we go. Who's going to win? Which one? Which one? Hey. Flip side. Okay, flip side will win. All right, Giblet going with flip side tactics. He's a big Cooks here fanboy. He's always told me that. Just saying Cooks here all the time. That was his first word. So, moving on, we got Dig versus Fnatic. I have this one as the number one match simply because Fnatic beat Dignitas last week. No one beats Dignitas. Like, literally no one beats Dignitas. But Fnatic did it last week. So, it should be really interesting to see if they can do it again. I feel like beating Dignitas last week actually hurts them somehow. Because it's so hard to beat them twice in a row. And now you just made them mad. Dignitas, obviously the world champs. The best team to ever play Rocket League. And they've barely been a team for over a year. But they have so much credentials. They have so much... They have three 3v3 titles. No one has more as a team. They have two world championship titles. No one's ever won two of those. They won them back-to-back. -back. Turbo obviously won three in a row. KDOPS won the European region three times in a row. KDOPS a two-time MVP. It goes on and on and on. The credentials for Dignitas are absolutely insane. They are the best team to ever play Rocket League. Simple as that. And there is no North America versus Europe anymore. It is Dignitas versus the world. Everyone wants to take this team out. The best place to take them out, put them in the 3 through 6 seed and beat them in one best of 7 online. Because if they go to the World Championship, you have to beat them twice. Two best of 5s in a live setting or possibly best of 7s in the Grand Finals or later on in the tournament. I would say that's more difficult to do it in a live setting. Because Ding Toss, they play so well there. But... I can't bet against Dignitas. I can't bet against them. I did this last time. It was Fnatic versus Dignitas, week number one. I was like, let's go for it. Let's go for Fnatic. Let's have some fun. Maybe they'll do it because they played a game earlier in the day, and then they got trounced. And, I, you know, Dignitas, I'm not going to count them out. Dignitas is going to win. They open up the RLC season for Europe. Dignitas will take the win. They will move 1-0 and be in first place for at least an hour, I guess, or 30 minutes by themselves and that's when we go with dignitas now let's go see what giblet has to say okay moving on to europe fanatic versus dignitas let's get those out here wow wow yeah that one looks cool okay hold on i'll bring it to you okay Make sure you're still in the shot, right? Okay, Fnatic versus Dignitas. Who's going to win? <laughs> that one? Yeah, that one looks cool. Dignitas going to win. Yeah. Okay. Yay! Yay! Okay. Easy peasy. One plus for Giblet is Dignitas actually has like a fun alien logo. He's probably going to pick them a lot, I assume, this season. That's going to help Giblet's records a ton. But remember... Myself and Giblet are competing against one another for the best record in predictions. As well as the fans, you guys, go on Twitter, vote, and we will have your picks in when we go over week number two. We'll talk about your week one picks and what happens, and we'll try and keep a record for every single game. So that would be 56 games by the end of the season, and then maybe we'll do something with playoffs. I'm not really sure. Uh, but there you have it, guys. That is my prediction. And... My matchups in hype order. Giblet's predictions, pretty accurate it seems, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And Twitter, we'll find out when the games are about to start. So, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Mouse Sports versus Vitality. Okay. Oh, my, oh Huggies? Huggies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Get back. Oh, oh god! Oh no! Oh no! We made a mess. We made a mess. Oh no! Oh no! Can we clean them up? Oh no! What? Can we clean them up? Okay. Clean them up. Clean them up. No, Ryan. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you gotta clean them up. Clean up time. You want to clean up? Clean up. Clean. Ryan, you're going crazy. You're going crazy. 
Okay, we clean them up and I'm gonna put them away. And Daddy's gotta vacuum after this. Okay? Vacuum. Vacuum. Good job. Clean up most. You can eat the stragglers. Alright, let's go back. You got set? Oh no! Oh no. Thank you, Ryan. Say bye bye.